Okay, so after we talked to you yesterday at the open workouts, uh, after you told us that you were trying to you know, push the anger to the side, and just relax. We talked to Jeremy, kind of on the opposite side of that spectrum. He's still very fired up. Um, do you think it'll be difficult at all for you to, to keep those emotions under ta under wraps when you step in there with him? I don't think so. No. Um, I think I think uh, we all deal with that. We all have things to deal with uh, on, in our minds, you know. And I have my own battles to deal with. And I'm not dealing with him, with with his issues as well. So I'm just you know doing the best that I can with what I have, and, and that's it. He said that if he doesn't kill you, it's not a win. What do you think about those comments? As I'm telling you, bro, I think um, everybody has their own battles to deal with. If he thinks that way, then God bless him, bro, because he's in a deep shit right here. You know, I think he already has a lot of trouble in his life and stuff that he has to deal with that um, I don't even really want to keep on pushing too much into his head. You know, I want him fresh for this fight because, I mean, he's a tough opponent. I don't want him to be weak. You know, this is showing me that he's weak and I, I want him fresh. I want you fresh, bro. You know, being very calm, he was very emotional. Do the that benefits you to, uh, Friday? I mean, I think so. You know, you gotta you gotta go into a fight uh, completely focused, mm. thinking on on what your goal is, and uh, not focusing on the other guy. You know, I'm only fighting me. You know, my only opponent up there in the cage is me. I have to win every second of the fight against me, not against him. He was saying that he's a badass motherfucker, and he doesn't think you are. Do you think he just has the con the complete wrong idea of you as a person, what you bring to the cage? Well, as I say yesterday. Uh, I welcome you anytime. Whenever you want to come to my hometown and you want to see how life is in there, I can show you real quick. You know, things go there from zero to 100 in less than a second. So if you think that, I'm fine too, you know, but I can show you anytime. Do you think that's just because of your fighting style? You got the flashy kicks and stuff. Maybe someone like him, who's a bit more of a brawler, you know, they see that and they think, oh, this guy's not the same to me. He doesn't have the same grit. Uh, you know, I think, I think, mm, so it's two kinds of people. Those who kick, somebody when he's when in the floor, and those who doesn't. I'm not one of those guys. I don't kick nobody whenever he's in the floor, you know? So if he likes to do that, I'm fine. We're fighters, we're fighting anyways. And you know, uh, in my career as a martial artist, you know, something that I have learned is that, uh, you know, we're competitors. And you know, he can think he, he's a killer, or he can think whatever he wants, you know, we're just competing. Speaking of your hometown, Mexico City obviously came out very hard for you, chair like crazy. They also got a lot of criticism for throwing things into the cage, pouring beers on fighters. Apparently, Angel Hill claims that Jeremy got punched by a fan. What do you think about those actions? Well, I don't. Um, I don't and think. Do you think it'll affect going there in the future? Um, I don't think. I, um, I don't think people's reaction was the the most proper, you know. But I couldn't do nothing about it. I didn't. I didn't tell the fan punch him, right. you know. I didn't tell the fans throw shit at him, throw things at him. You know, it was people's reaction, first reaction, before even I start speaking in the microphone. You can go and watch the replay again. You know, I, I remain calm until, I, I was I was in the cage for those six minutes uh, the, the doctor was shaking him and people started throwing stuff at him, you know, and people was putting a lot of pressure, you know, he was just with his eyes closed. I think right here with your eyes closed is one world. Whenever, whenever you close your eyes and whenever you're in a dark room by yourself, who you are, what you think in there, that's what it really matters. You know, I think whenever he closed his eyes and whenever he was, you know, he realized and he was in deep shit, he he decided to use the rules to get out of there as soon as possible. Yeah, did you have any regrets though? Like I saw a lot of people say that maybe if you'd have told the crowd to calm down a little bit, you know, speak in Spanish on the microphone or something. I mean, do you feel like maybe in retrospect you could have handled that situation a little bit different? Maybe you could have helped the crowd calm down a little bit? I mean, I think I did with what I said, you know, but he was already out of the, the place whenever I, I grabbed the microphone. You know, you can go and watch the replays again, as I'm telling you, you know, people start throwing stuff before I even start talking or doing anything. You know, uh, I mean, as I'm telling you, it's, I don't think it was the, the best reaction, but it was the most natural reaction to pe uh, of people doing doing that. You know, I, I mean, poor Jeremy, bro. I, I, I think nobody would like to have that uh, situation. You know, I think it was uh, kind of sad, you know, but uh, even like that, I think the, the, the most hurt in there was me. You talk about your hometown going from zero to a hundred really fast. What kind of stuff have you seen go that fast? 
whenever you want, I can show you because it's installed, I can say. Yesterday, you kept using certain uh, terminology. You kept saying, you referred to your fighting as dancing around. You said that you would have an advantage in a five round fight because it gave you more time to, to move around. Do you, do, you have, do you think that's inaccurate? Do you feel like you, you're going to go in there on, on Friday and stand in the pocket and, and trade with him and give him the best exchanges? Mm, I think, uh, that's, as I was telling you, uh, every time that you're going to fight, uh, it's a different fight. Not, no, no matter if it's uh, the same opponent, you know, everybody comes with a different mindset. And you can see it, you know, dealing, uh, going into a fight. Um, I think this fight is a complete different. It's a complete different opponent because of his mindset. Even though he's the same, I, I changed my strategy as well. And um, you know, um, if I can fight, if I can fight five rounds in high altitude, I, I think I can do three in sea level. So when you hear him say that, that he, he gave you the advantage <laughs> in a five round fight, he gave you the advantage in a five round fight. Do you think that he's, that's a signal that he's going to come out super aggressive on Friday? Of course. Yeah. But what else he can do? It's the only way that he knows how to fight. So that's what I, that's what I was expecting anyways. Yesterday, you didn't really want to talk about it. You mentioned that if you win, especially if you win in a spectacular fashion, you break the champs, you're facing the winner of Max Holloway, Alex Alcanaz. I know you said you're not focusing on that, but your prediction on who wins is who do you think you match up stylistically with better? Well, I think I think uh, the fight can go can go either way. Why? Because I think Alexander Bolanowski is a young, tough guy, tough opponent, pros, a prospect, and uh, you know he he went inside the rankings real quick. And um, as we saw him against Jose Aldo, he controlled him. We have never seen something like that before. But Jose Aldo is is going from his prime. is going a little a little bit like down, you know, because of the age and all the years and all that, you know, and. Uh, I think Max Holloway is on his prime right now. I think Max Holloway is really hard to beat. And he, if, if either of, of those opponents come with a nice strategy, either one can take the fight, you know. But I think I think if Polanowski wants to win, he has to close distance and try to keep him down, hold him down or hold him in the cage, try to make some damage in there, like wrestle him down. And uh, Max Holloway, of course, has to, get, has to be away. You, 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 you've been linked to Zabi for a while. You guys are scheduled to play each other, I know. Obviously, he has a very tough matchup with Calvin Cater. But is that a fight that you feel like you need to get because of? I I asked I asked uh, the UFC and I uh, I was trying to get the fight in Mexico City because it's, uh, it was a fight that uh, the fans wants to see, and uh, I don't know I don't know something was uh, going on with with him, and uh, you know the fight the fight couldn't happen the fight offered to me was Jeremy Stevens and it was that you know it was that, and uh, you know I've been asking to fight. I mean, as I say before, and I will say it again, Jeremy Stevens wasn't my first option because he's behind me on the rankings, not because I did respect him or whatever. And I'll say it again, I'm always looking to fight somebody that is ahead of me on the rankings in order for me to move forward, you know. And, uh, you know, I don't even care about the opportunity of fighting for the title show right now. All my focus right now is fighting Friday against Jeremy Stevens and perform well. After they call up the fight in Mexico City, you obviously were very emotional. One thing that got a lot of eyeballs was when Michael Bisping came up to you, talked to you, you pushed him, swore at him. I know immediately afterwards you apologized. Did you guys ever talk a little deeper about that? And is there no animosity anymore? No, I, what I say was against him. It wasn't against him. You know, it was just in the moment. I didn't realize that he, who was touching me when I was like, Whoa! So, you know, it was just in the moment. Just, just feeling all that, you know. And then I, th I think, I really think I did really well, you know, I mean, there is some emotions going going through you whenever you are in a, inside a cage in front of all that people and with all the pressure and stuff, you know. And I think I calmed myself down real quick, as we have seen before. It, it gets a lot worse sometimes, so I think I I deal with it real real good, you know. Instead of acting really really bad, I think I did a great job, and uh, you know we are human beings. You know, you can you cannot be so tough on me and like, oh, your reaction. And we are human beings. Are you gonna tell me that you never have done that before? So you are perfect. Then you should you should be teaching me how to act. So no way you're calling Bisping out of retirement for a match, right? Ah, uh, uh, probably I will. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, brother. You're so big. <laughs>